Hello, everyone. Welcome to Endwell Live, where each week we're having a conversation with a special guest about how in this unprecedented time of crisis, we can collectively find community and best support those facing serious illness, support caregivers and families. I'm Shoshana Ungerleiter. I'm a physician and the founder of Endwell, where we're focused on making the end of life uh, a part of life. And I hope you're all safe and healthy out there. And if not healthy, I hope that you're on the mend. Uh, we're coming to you today to find community in one another and support our physical and our emotional health through this virtual conversation. So today I have the pleasure of speaking with Wendy McNaughton, who is a New York Times bestselling illustrator and graphic journalist whose daily draw together art classes on Instagram have become a sensation, a must do for kids and for adults. And, and we're gonna talk for about 20 minutes and then open it up to, to you all, our audience. So please say hello in the comments below and tell us where you're from. Enter your questions as well while we're talking and then go ahead and right now share this link on your own page so others can join this conversation. And also a thank you to the Cambia Health Foundation and the Tauber Family Foundation for their support of this program. So hi, Wendy. How are you? Hi, Shoshana. It's so good to see you. I'm so happy to be here with you. Oh, I'm so glad, glad to have you. And, uh, and it's Friday, right? It's Friday. So. We could do a little Friday <laughs> dance as we yeah, do, do it. every week. We do a Friday dance. I'm not actually going to stand up and pretend to be a pencil, which is what we did today. <laughs> but, but yeah, Friday is a good day to mark in our calendars, especially when the days kind of blend together. Why not say it's Friday? Let's do a dance. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so your, uh, your daily drawing class, it's, it's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific time called Draw Together with Wendy Mack is such a huge hit with kids and with adults. Um, can, you, can you share with us what inspired you to, to do it and, and what you're learning in the process? Yeah, um, it, is, it is a journey. It's been really fun. So Draw Together uh, with Wendy Mack is a 30 minute um, live drawing class. Um, it's on Instagram Live, and also uh, past classes are up on Facebook. Um, and we have thousands of kids all over the world, kids of all ages, who come together in their home studios to draw together. Um, and in like over 40 countries. And it all started because my mom suggested it. Yay, moms. I know. Um, my wife, Caroline, and I were talking to my parents. It was the day before the school closures um, started in San Francisco when they were announced. And we were thinking like, well, what can we do to help parents? We don't have kids ourselves, but we have a lot of kiddos in our lives and not most of our friends are parents. So um, we knew the kids were going to be losing their schedule, their routines, their classes. Um, and also parents were going to be real stressed out. So my mom said, why don't you just teach some art classes? And uh, the next day, although I'd never taught kids art before, and I'd never done an Instagram live in my life, <laughs> we started. And now it's been, um, this is the end of week 10. Oh my gosh, I had no idea that you, I thought you were a serious like Instagram live pro and that you had taught, you know, art your whole life. You would never know that this is, uh, this is new for you. That's just such an incredible story. I, I can't even tell you how many adults that I know, no, no kids. They just, they tune in every day. So it's, it's really been something amazing that you've created. Oh, I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, I think that um, we started off thinking that it was going to be almost like um, just something to, to keep the kids busy while the parents actually could get some work done during the day. But we didn't anticipate what um, a lifeline it was going to be, not just for parents, but also for kids who are going through so much and all of, you know, everything that's going on in the world right now. That's a lot of emotions. It's a lot to process. And um, art is really one of the best ways for kids, again, kids of all ages, to process the feelings that we have that maybe we're not really ready to articulate and kind of let it physically move through our body and get some of that energy out on the page, focus, bring our attention into our, our hearts and our bodies, and then see what we're actually really feeling so that we can address it. So I think it's, it's turned out to be something that's been helpful in many ways for kids and their families. 
Oh, I love that. So your dog Suso is often the drawing model. How many portraits of her do you think the people have made so far? Oh my God, Suso is so famous. Can I just tell you, this is really funny. Uh, my wife, uh, Caroline, who's also, by the way, the cinematographer, um, you know, the, the sound person. She's basically like the behind the scenes making all this happen. Um, Caroline was walking Suso the other day and a kid said to their mom, mom, that dog looks like Suso. We don't know this kid. And Caroline's like, not only does this dog look like Suso, it is Suso. And the kid went wild. <laughs> so Suso has now become a bit of a celebrity. And That's what we call Insta-famous. Insta-famous and also like a little demanding, I might say. She's like, whatever, little princess. That's fine. <laughs> she oh works my hard. gosh. <laughs> That's incredible. So I love that you're not only offering these classes for free, but that you did a, a GoFundMe to raise money to get art uh, kits to kids who need them in San Francisco. And, and now you're raising funds to get these kits to kids in the East Bay, to Queens and Brooklyn. I think finding ways to directly help others is something that many people would like to do right now. Um, how, how did you come up with this and how did you connect with, with your community partners? So, um, it became really clear quite quickly that while we can offer the drawing classes for free, um, drawing materials themselves are not. And any parent who's buying crayons for their kids is gonna tell you they're actually quite expensive. Um, and also, you know, not everybody has access to internet. It's something that we take for granted a lot. Not everybody has Instagram. Not everybody has internet in their homes. Um, so a, a box of drawing supplies is a lifeline right now for a lot of families. Um, and a woman who works at Dropbox named Michelle Morrison is fantastic. Um, she approached us and said, hey, you know what? I have this wonderful idea. What if we created this kit for kids? We're like, that is so great. So the first round we did as a partnership with Dropbox, so cool. And then we decided, you know what? Let's keep this going. And so we turned Draw Together with Wendy Mac into Draw Together the nonprofit. And um, we've raised, I think, just about $35,000 um, to create these art kits that have everything a kid needs, um, paper, pens, crayons, paints, um, and also an activity sheet so that kids don't have access to the internet. There's activities and fun things, suggestions for them to do. Um, and we're partnering with a wonderful, the uh, Draw Together has a director named Vinny Eng, and he is just such a knowledgeable human and a wonderful soul who knows so much about what's going on in the community and the organizations in San Francisco. So we're partnering with local communities that really know um, where to go and who really could most use these, and they're distributing them um, in all the different areas they're going. So. Boys and Girls Club just received their first 500 draw kits, um, draw together kits. And then there's about six other orgs in the Bay Area that are coming up soon. Then we're gonna go out to the East Coast. So uh, they're 20 bucks a piece and people can go to GoFundMe and um, just look up Draw Together Wendy Mac and $20 gets uh, a kid, an art kit that is gonna be a real lifeline through the summer. That's phenomenal. Yeah, it, 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 partnering with people on the ground also is so important to figure out, you know, how to best make those connections. Where where are the needs? I I just that's that's really incredible that you've you've done this. What an amazing service. Um, if if oh, you're just joining us, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, just the organizations are already doing so much in their communities. Um, they're you know helping distribute food um, to folks who are in need, um, and so they're already doing the work. We just wanted to make sure. Um, you know, we don't want to ever create more work when we're doing these kinds of things, you know. Um, and so by partnering with the community organizations that really know their communities, um, we can just make sure that it goes to the people who need them. So definitely. If, if you're just joining us out there, be sure to say hi in the comments below. Uh, tell us where you're from and ask your questions as we're talking and go ahead and share this conversation on your page. Click that share button so others can join. Um, so, I, you know, I think we first met because of the graphic journalism series that you did about inmates uh, involved with the prison hospice project in, at San Quentin. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I published a piece in California Sunday Magazine um, about a program, a group of gentlemen in um, San Quentin who were organizing um, and studying to become hospice caregivers for their peers. Um, a lot of them were doing life 
um, and still are doing life um, in San Quentin and had seen a lot of their, um, their fellow inmates, their friends, um, their family pass away and they hadn't been able to support them um, uh, in their final days. And so I had been working uh, as the artist in residence at Zen Hospice Project um, and met an incredible nurse there uh, named Lady Bird Morgan, who was working um, as one of the trainers in the prison hospice project. And so she helped me um, come in and I spent a few months going once a week to attend those trainings and getting to know those guys. And I gotta say, it's incredible, incredible humans doing that work in there. I um, mean, it was my honor to talk to all of them, interview them. You know, you can't bring a camera into a prison, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can bring a pencil and a piece of paper. So I was able to draw them all and document this training, interview them, and in partnership with them, it was really a collaborative project, um, document the work they're doing and help get the word out there about it. And are you still in touch uh, with the program or some of the men? Uh, and, and, if, and if so, uh, what, what are you hearing about the experience of being incarcerated during this pandemic? You know, um, I haven't heard anything firsthand from them during this time. One of the frustrating things about it is because I went in kind of being like a volunteer, you're not able to have any contact afterwards. Um, but from what I hear, uh, it, it's continued on. They're continuing their work. Um, the Prison Hospice Project has, you know, gone on. Um, Marvin Much, who's a big part of that, um, you know, he is still doing his work with everyone. I mean, so I can only imagine what's going on there right now, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we, we know Marvin over here at Endwell. He did a phenomenal uh, Endwell talk this last year. And, uh, and the work that, that they're doing is so, so important. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's unimaginable what, what is going on in, in the prisons right now in, in the context of COVID. So um, yeah, keeping those folks in our, in our, in our thoughts um, for sure. Um, I, I want to get back to um, before before we were uh, live. We, we were talking about um, learning uh, art, learning to draw. I'm somebody that you know. My mom's an artist, but like I don't really you know have any. I, I it's pretty hard for me to take a piece of paper and a, and a pen and like actually draw something that doesn't look terrible. And you were like, no, anybody can draw. To, <laughs> like, what what do you mean? Like, how I, is that is that real? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, I hear it a lot that people say, oh, well, you're an artist. I'm not an artist. You can draw. I can't draw. And, you know, there's a, there's a time in our lives when we all were drawing, right? We were all putting our pieces of our crayons on a piece of paper and making doodles and whatever. And at some point, somebody came along and they said, you know what, that doesn't look like a this or that, you know, made some kind of judgmental comment that says you can't draw. And then a lot of people just stopped right there. Um, and along with that, I think we stopped kind of maybe, hmm, we close off just opportunities for us to tap into different kinds of creativity without judgment. A lot of kind of opportunities for play that always exist. The great thing is, it doesn't matter if you haven't done it for 30 years, 50 years, it's always there for you to try. So I would challenge you to do this. I have, a, I have an exercise for you, okay? It's a really fun one. Um, so if you sit at home with somebody who you spend a lot of time with, and if you're on your own at home, then you can do it. You know, if anybody watching this is on their own, they can like um, do it in a mirror, right? And get a piece of paper and get a pen and look closely at the face of the person who you're looking at. And then for three, four minutes, draw each other without ever looking down at the page. Never, ever look. I know it sounds, sounds nuts, right? Well, here's the thing. It's going to be bad. No matter what, it's going to be bad. So you can like eliminate the idea that you're going to do a good drawing. But what you're going to find is that the drawing is going to end up being pretty cool in its own way. And that's because instead of thinking like, I should draw a good face, you're actually really going to start looking at the person that's in front of you in a really close way. For maybe some of us the first time, even if we've lived with somebody for like 10 years, you look really closely at them for the first time. And when you're drawing, you're documenting what you're seeing. And so for me, what's really interesting about drawing isn't doing a good drawing or like being a good artist. It's, it's um, paying attention to things and it's using drawing as a vehicle to see things that we'd otherwise overlook. 
So I think we all have the opportunity to, to start looking more closely with that. So I challenge you to do that and let me know how it goes. I love that. Now I know what I'm doing tonight with my husband. Yes. A <laughs> little, little relationship therapy, a little drawing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, that, that's amazing. Um, a quick reminder to our viewers, um, please ask your questions for Wendy in the comments below and share this conversation on your page so others can join us. Um, so switching gears a little bit here, you trained as a social worker and then became an illustrator, a journalist, and now an art teacher, of course, and more. Um, it, it seems like a lot of people are, are, are taking this time to think about living and working or experiencing life differently. Um, do you have any advice for, for how to make life transitions? No. <laughs> okay. I would never, I would never offer advice. Um, I don't think anybody should ever listen to my advice on anything. Um, and, but I would say I wouldn't offer advice because uh, my mom told me something, my mom, back to my mom again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was, young i don't remember when but she said to me life is like a basket and it's it's life is like a basket you go through your life and you have these experiences and it's like you're taking this experience and you put it in your basket and you move on to the next thing and someday you find yourself in a situation you look down you're like whoa i have all of these experiences and these skills and here's this opportunity to try something new i actually do have a lot of experience to bring to bear you know um, I don't think we can ever anticipate what's coming next. This is a perfect example of it. And the way that people are adapting, um, I mean, hey, we're doing a Facebook Live, like would either, you know what I mean? Like we're finding new ways to connect with each other, to create community. We're all getting outside of our comfort zones while we're inside of our tiny little personal zones. Um, and we're adapting and trying new things. And while it is a really, really hard and sad time, there's also a lot of growth and creativity that is coming out of it. I don't, I mean, end well, right? That's what it is. It, like all of these things exist at the same time. And so while I wouldn't give any advice around it, I do think that being open to the change of our identities now, maybe how we're growing um, and what might happen next is, is a scary place to be in, but also an exciting one. Yeah. I, you know, I've often found for myself that just being open to the possibilities and, and even if it's something that I would never have thought I would end up doing or, or even consider, um, just, just kind of showing up and, and saying, well, you know, that this is interesting. Um, and, and to see where it takes you, especially are now. You having, um, yeah. Are you having that experience now yourself with this? I mean, yeah, I thought I was going to be practicing medicine full time, a regular doctor, uh, you know, when I finished training and I never thought I would be doing the work that, you know, I'm, I'm uh, been able to do with Endwell. I never thought I'd be, you know, on the news, like reporting about medical stuff. Like I, I didn't know how to do that. I just, I had an opportunity and I tried it once, even though I was scared. So um, it's, it's amazing what can happen when we even just in small ways, like push ourselves outside of our comfort zones, you know, or have, yeah. to, have the opportunity to do that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And who knows if you'll continue on with this, if you'll go back to that and then you'll have these new experiences to bring to bear. I mean, it's, we, we, this is, I mean, if there's ever been a lesson and we don't know what's coming next, like this is mm -hmm. it. And to, um, to embrace that is a challenge, but what a gift. What a gift. Absolutely. We're moving into our audience questions, folks. So if you have a question or even a comment, uh, enter it in the comments below and we'll get to it. So our first question for Wendy, um, as a graphic journalist, what do you think the role of visually documenting the pandemic will play in terms of helping us keep track and, and learn from what's happening in various communities? Uh, you know, that is a fantastic question. I ask myself that all the time. Um, there's certainly a lot of challenges in the field right now, right? Um, we can't be out there documenting. I mean, we can a bit more now, but for some time there, it just wasn't really an option. Um, I had just started into a project that was having me in the streets um, every day, and I had just been out there for a couple of weeks, and, and then this started, and so we you know, made a big shift. There are some folks who are working on um, as first responders who are also um, drawing. And I, 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 
if it's okay, oh what goodness. I'll do, I would love to post afterwards. I wish I had this name off the top of my head. I don't, but maybe I could share it afterwards um, on the Facebook post or something like that, a link. Is that possible? Sure. Um, and yeah, I'll, yeah, that. I'll share that um, just so some folks can see that. So um, if people are able to draw and document what's going on outside in the world, um, that is an incredibly important thing. I also think that documenting what is going on inside um, is, mm. is also an important thing to be doing. So yes, lots of work to be yeah. done in the field. Another question from Mary. Uh, my patients struggle with fine motor problems due to arthritis and tremors. How can I use drawing with them? Would there be therapeutic benefit to them to simply watch me? That's a great question too. These are so good. Um, so I am not um, an, an art therapist or a physical therapist. So I'm talking just from my experience and perspective. Um, so fine motor skills, something that we work on in drawing for sure. Something we talk about in draw together class is that we don't only draw with our fingers precisely, we draw with our whole bodies. We draw with our wrists, our arms, we draw with movement. And so if um, somebody isn't able to do precise movements with a pencil, maybe perhaps a brush and a canvas that's a bit further away might be something that um, might feel more comfortable. And again, I mean, personally, I'm not interested in any drawing that's right. I'm not interested in a drawing that's exact. I'm interested in a drawing or rather what is interesting to me in a drawing is that it expresses the person who made it and the process of them making it. So even if somebody has tremors, even if somebody has some physical restrictions um, or challenges, I should say, that there are probably ways that will make their creation so unique and specific to them that, it, and it's the process is joyful for them. I mean, that's a successful uh, art piece in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question, um, through this process of creating draw together, what, what surprised you most, if anything? Um, the amount of parents who write in and say that their kids, uh, have gotten past their fears of perfectionism or their self judgment and mm -hmm. that, um, that they, are enjoying themselves and they're creating artwork that they're proud and they're hanging on the walls. But it's just, it's really that some kids, in this back to your, um, the, the question before from the viewer, um, some kids who don't feel comfortable at first drawing, um, they'll just watch maybe for a class or two. It's also fun to watch. I mean, if you've ever watched Bob Ross, like, you know, it can be quite pleasurable to watch a happy little tree be made, right? Yeah. So like just watching the class and then the kids will feel like, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. Um, and so kids that I think might never have drawn because of the pressures that society puts on them to be perfect or to be right, well, they're drawing now. And that really excites me about what that is going to mean in other parts of their lives, whether they keep drawing or not. It's, it's, it's something inside that set that I think could play out later in their life and be really beneficial. And that means a lot. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Um, we have a comment from Emma uh, from Seattle. She says she loves Wendy's classes and, and seeing people. Oh, it just went away. I don't know what she just said, but um, Emma just gave you a really nice compliment on, on our Facebook <laughs> comments. And we have um, another question here. Um, let's see. Well, Nope, it went away. Um, <laughs> it's disappearing. I love it. Yeah, it's just disappearing with visible ink. Um, <laughs> yeah, another, another person said draw together is a great initiative. My grandchildren participate almost daily and I do too. When COVID-19 is over, I hope Wendy will have classes for adults as well. And uh, I'm a physical therapist and I agree with what you said about the benefits of doing it with patients. I see the benefit of therapists learning how to observe through drawing. Oh, Ooh. wonderful. I really, I really love that. Um, other questions, folks, go ahead and, and ask them. Um, we have a, a few more minutes here with the, the amazing Wendy. I'll say one um, thing about after um, the pandemic is over, um, we are ending our draw together classes, our daily classes at the end of next week. We said that we were gonna go through the end of school and we are, that ends next week. So while Draw Together, the class will have its graduation 
commencement address and all of that kind of stuff on Friday, which everybody should come to and celebrate the kids. Um, we will continue on with Draw Together the Camp, which will start <laughs> next Monday, <laughs> which will have a different schedule. Um, it will probably be just twice a week, but have a lot more outdoor activities. Um, using drawing as a way for kids to engage with the outdoors. So if they can't be in camp and go to the pools and go to the playgrounds, we can use drawing as a way to connect with nature. So we'll be doing that more over the summer. Um, we'll keep it going. And, and that'll, that'll still be virtual on Instagram? On Instagram, yes. It'll be on Instagram okay. and then later on YouTube, yeah. And then have, some folks have questions because they have not, either they're not Instagram users or they have not uh, joined your class before. How do we log into Wendy's classes on Instagram? How do you do so, that? Uh, great question. On Instagram, um, my handle is Wendy Mac, so you can just go there. And then um, there'll be this little smiling face, that's me. And then you can tap on it at 10 a.m. Um, this week, or next week rather, Monday through Friday. And then you Pacific. watch it live. Hmm? 10 a.m. Pacific, right? 10 a.m. Pacific, thank you. Yes, yes. 10 a.m. Pacific, okay. you can watch it live 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and then it will stay up on my feed, which is if you go to my page, it's the squares down below. And what I tell people is if you look at like, there's a little um, TV that has kind of a, a little lightning bolt in it, you click on that and that's gonna be one of the classes. Um, also, we do put them up on YouTube. So you can just go to YouTube and search for Wendy Mac and you'll see all of the classes. I think when we finish, there'll be 55 classes up there. Ooh, so there's your summer. Oh my, my gosh. So, <laughs> so phenomenal. So many people are commenting that they're hearing about this for the first time and they want to learn more. So that's, you go to Instagram and you're, you're logged in as you know, uh, yourself. And then you go to Wendy, Wendy Mac is her yep. handle. And, and then tell us again, how can we support your efforts of uh, bringing art supplies to children? Where do we go to find more, more about that? Uh, go to GoFundMe and search for draw together Wendy Mac and you'll see, um, art kits for kids in COVID-19. And $20 uh, will buy an art kit for a kid. $100 will buy five. So uh, whatever anybody can, can do to support, uh, your dollars will go straight into um, art supplies for kids. And it really, really makes the difference between um, a kid having a creative, expressive um, opportunity during this time and not. So yeah. thank you. Man, Wendy, you're seriously amazing. Thank you so oh, much for joining us. At you. Thank you for everything you. you're doing, really. And thank you so much for this conversation. It's really a joy to speak with you. I'm so appreciative thank of everything you. you're doing. To, to our audience, we want to hear from you. How has coronavirus changed how you feel and prepare for serious illness? Uh, for caregiving for the end of life, please go to endwellproject.org slash stories to share your story with us. Tune in next week for Vivian Nunez, a writer and the founder of Too Damn Young, a resource for teens and young adults who are navigating grief. Um, and again, thank you, Wendy, for joining us today. And to all of you out there, um, it's communities and conversations like this that give me hope in these tough times. So stay safe and well.